All right, good morning and welcome to Old Bridge Church. We are back up and running and glad that you could join us. Would you uh, join in in our call to worship? God calls us all to go into the world to share the gospel. And through Holy Spirit, God empowers us to do what Jesus calls even greater things. And let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for getting us successfully through another week. We thank you for all the ministries that are happening around our church. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with us this morning as we praise you and as we worship you. For we ask this in Christ's holy and precious name. Amen. Would you join us as we sing? I have a few announcements for you. Uh, first, I want to thank everybody who helped us this past Thursday. We finally, praise God, got back to doing our monthly food giveaway. Had not done it since February. We had a great crew of people from church doing that. Thanks to David Bice and his team, we were able to give away tomatoes, peaches, and cantaloupes. So fruit and produce, uh, just awesome. Uh, do need your help uh, in our food collection outside uh, the front of the church. We are still giving that away to some folks in the church, some folks in our community, to Acts, to the Salvation Army. Um, just non-perishable food. So if you could continue to, to do that, we'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, Monday night, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, uh, Ruth Anderson, our former uh, board of Supervisor Person and her pastor, Brian Burdett, and I have put together an event uh, of praying at the public schools. I will be at Westridge at 7 o'clock. There are other schools that they will be going to or that you could go to as well. It's an event called Greater Than Prayer. Uh, if you go to Sign Up Genius, just Greater Than Prayer, you can find that. You can sign up. We're going to be wearing masks, we're not going to be holding hands, but we are going to be praying for teachers and for schools uh, and for all that's going on. 
Just want to let you know our Healthy Church team has continued to meet, continued to look at ways we might get back on campus. That's probably going to happen with some small groups soon, we will let you know. And then we're looking at, in September, doing a drive-in movie. Now, now we are fortunate here, we've had some, some men in the church that work with the Rotary. They had done a drive-in movie over at the ballpark, so we felt like that was a good way to bring some people on to campus. So just kind of keep, keep following our announcements on that. We're going to do that when it starts getting dark a little earlier. Invite you to come here in your car. We'll have it broadcast the radio uh, to your car and then watch it up on a big screen. It's going to be cool. going to be a way that you can bring some friends and family uh, back up to church. At this time, let us enjoy some music by some of our choir members. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, again, we do thank you and praise you that another week has come by and come and gone. And Lord, you've been in our midst. We thank you for the chance to reach out to our community, which we did early and often this week. 
We thank you for the opportunity to pray for our schools and our teachers and our students uh, tomorrow night, and we pray that you would be with us there. We thank you for the opportunity every day that you give us to reach out to our neighbors, to, to share this Facebook Live with a group of people who, who maybe don't even go to church, and Lord, that their hearts might be open to you. We thank you, Lord, for all of the resources that we have as a church. I thank you for the people who continue to give of their funds and to give of their time uh, in this ministry. We are extremely appreciative. Lord, we, we come to you a seeking forgiveness. Lord, when we left last week, when we went out into the world, we thought it was going to be a better week, and in so many ways it was, but Lord, we fell. We stumbled. We, we didn't hear the cry of the needy as we have been called to hear. We've ignored folk who were hurting. And Lord, we didn't jump in when we should have. And we ask that you would forgive us and that you would fill us and free us for joyful obedience. Lord, we know that, that we're in some weeks where there is, uh, there are some protests. There is some, some racial unrest still over racial injustice. And Lord, we pray that we would be doing everything we can to eradicate racism. And Lord, we know for some of us it means that we need to listen more than we speak. And Lord, where we, we may have a hard time relating, we still need to listen to our sisters and brothers and be agents of change. Lord, help us to do that. We know that our bishop is leading the way and we pray that we would get behind her and that in our church, we would get involved in our community. Lord, we know another week of politics has come and gone. Another convention has come and gone. And Lord, we know that, that we are a church of Republicans and Democrats and independents and everything in between. But Lord, more than anything else, we're Christians. Our allegiance first and foremost is to you. And Lord, may that shine through in us. May, may we... Lord, just be civil toward one another. May we listen to one another. May we never cut each other down. And Lord, may we just pray for those people who are running for office. May we support this political process that we have and make sure, Lord, that it works. We thank you for that. Lord, we pray for those in the path of the hurricanes. We know it is that season. For those along the Gulf Coast, we pray that you would be with them and protect them. And Lord, as these storms come up the coast, we also ask for your protection and we ask that we would help people to get out of harm's way. And Lord, when there has been some sort of destruction, we ask that you would give us the means, the time and the grace to go and help as well. Lord, we thank you for those in our church who serve in the military. We pray for those who are stationed away from our country, those who are overseas and we just just pray that you would be with them and, and, and guide them and protect them. Bring them safely back to us soon. Lord, we pray for those in our church who are suffering from illness. Lord, we, we, we know we have some folk who have um, been dealing with, with COVID. We, we, we pray for the Martin family that you would be with them. Lord, we pray for the Schmidt family with their, their grandson. Uh, having some, uh, their baby grandson being in the hospital recently, and we pray that you would be with him. We pray for Kim Kiggins and her family as she is still wrestling with COVID, coming through the better side, but Lord, it's, it's been tough. We pray for those who are shut in. We pray for those who uh, are just kind of, of lonely and don't have anybody calling on them. We pray that we would do that. And Lord, we pray that we would be your church. Not, not just a building where people can meet. We thank you for that. But that we would be your church out in the world. We ask your blessings upon us. And Lord, we ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, let us continue to worship 
as we give back to God a portion of all that God has given us. Some of you have already sent your tithe and offerings here. We appreciate that. Some of you are thinking about sending it now. Again, 3966 Old Bridge Road, Woodbridge, Virginia, 221922, or you can give online. Uh, we greatly appreciate that. Thank you. You know, one of the things we can do, even though we're not physically together, is we can use our prayers and our creeds as a way of uniting. So would you join with me in the Apostles' Creed at home? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And again, let us sing as we continue our worship.
You know, it, it, it might not seem like it, but to some degree, we are at the end of summer. <laughs> One very weird, strange, crazy summer. Sometimes we have a hard time knowing what day it is right now, let alone what season. But it has been summer, and summer is coming to an end. Teachers and students are going back to school, but they're not going back to what school was like before March. So it's a little bit different, a little bit stressful for some folk. If you've been following COVID-19 guidelines, you haven't been out as much as usual. You probably haven't visited people. There's some places you haven't been at all. You have been keeping your distance. Think about this. Think about what normally happens in the summer with camps and pools and all that. Family reunions have been limited or canceled. Weddings have been limited or canceled. Sporting events and any number of usual activities we like to take part in from June through August haven't happened. And for many of you, this is stressful, very stressful. This week I have learned of a few folks related to our church who have tested positive for the coronavirus. None who have been around this, this building, nobody has been in danger here, but still these are our, our friends and our family. These are people we love and care for. And one of them has been in the hospital some, so we, we keep lifting them up. A lot of you have been questioning what is going on here at church when we are coming back together for what we know as church or worship. And I got to tell you, I, I've felt it in some of the meetings, Zoom meetings that I've been in. I've felt a certain level of frustration, <laughs> the likes of which you have not experienced in some time. And I think that's good. I think the fact that you want to be back together is good. Use that energy to send the cards. Use that energy to call somebody. Use that energy to invite somebody to be a part of your Facebook watch party. But it does raise the questions. What do we do? How can we not just survive this, but thrive? And, and what's the answer? Well, you know, for me, for every problem, I believe that Jesus is the answer. And I don't say that lightly, but it takes a little bit of digging. I think Jesus and then Holy Spirit can guide us through this. So I wanted to look at a few passages this morning to give us a perspective. I'm going to look at one of those books that if you ask somebody in uh, confirmation or in middle school, Sunday school, to do a report on a book of the Bible, they might find this one because it's short and the chapters are short. Titus. And I'm going to look at um, chapter 3. I was going to go verses 5 through 8. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a heads up, the, the start of that, and then get into this in the message. This is going to sound like nothing you have ever heard before. <laughs> Don't be offended. The language uh, is a little looser than perhaps it may have been at other times. Remind the people to respect the government and be law-abiding, always ready to lend a helping hand. Aren't you glad there's something after the comma here? Aren't you glad that when it says, remind the people to respect the government and be law-abiding, that there is um, a way to do that? Always ready to lend a helping hand. Yes, go by the rules. Yes, go by the laws. But lend a helping hand. Lend a helping hand to your government. Lend a helping hand to people around you. And this part, wow, they, this wasn't written while there were political commercials apparently. No insults, no fights. What? The government, no insults, no fights. Some good advice to take. God's people should be what? Big hearted and courteous. We ought to be big-hearted, open-hearted, grace-hearted, and nice and kind. It wasn't so long ago that we ourselves were stupid and stubborn, dupes of sin, 
ordered every which way by our glands. Say what? It's Paul talking. You know, he talked about this kind of stuff at times. Going around with a chip on our shoulder, hated and hating back. But when God, our kind and loving Savior God, stepped in, he saved us from all that. Look at that again. We've been told how we used to be. Paul was pretty good at looking how he used to be when he was a persecutor of Christians. He wasn't saying this lightly. He wasn't pointing fingers at people. He was pointing that finger at himself as well. And he says that's kind of where we used to be. You know anybody's got a chip on their shoulder? You know any church person, any Christian that has a chip on their shoulder? It's not a good witness. I got to tell you that. It's the le my least favorite way to express the grace of God is by being defensive. Hated, you know, sometimes we're going to be hated, and hating. God doesn't like either one of those, but God stepped in. God saved us. It was all his doing. We had nothing to do with it. Man, step on my toes here, God. I like to think that I'm as great as I am today because I accepted Jesus and I follow the rules and I'm a great Christian. And God here says, get over yourself. It wasn't all your doing. God has done this. He gave us a good bath and we came out of it new people, washed inside and out by Holy Spirit. So you think about that immersion baptism. I think about Randy Travis's song about baptism, and it talks about coming out of that water, feeling cleansed and feeling relieved. That's how sometimes we feel after we've been baptized. But then washed inside and out by Holy Spirit, baptizing our heart. Our Savior Jesus poured out new life so generously, God's gift has restored our relationship with him and given us back our lives. There's more life to come, an eternity of life. You can count on this. God initiated a relationship with us, as, as some passages would say, while we were still sinners while we were doing everything we could to do things on our own, to run away from God, God sought us and bought us with Christ's redeeming blood, as that hymn saying. Sometimes we need to be reminded of that. Sometimes we need to be humbled and realize it's all about God transforming and working in us. And then he talks about, again, God gives us this gift of restoration. God brings us back into the family, gives us back our lives. And when we're going through times like we are going through now, I want to hear this last line. And there's more life to come. And eternity of life. Stephen Curtis Chapman had a song a few years ago, there's more to this life than living and dying. There's so much more to life that is to come. An eternity of life, not just a little bit, eternity. It goes on forever. You can count on this, you can count on Jesus. We can count on Holy Spirit who has washed us inside and out. We can cry out to God anytime we want. We, we do it in a great way in worship. We do it in a great way in our songs and in our prayers. 
So there's this, this book in the Old Testament called Lamentations. I haven't spent much time in Lamentations, but I've spent a little bit of time lamenting. <laughs> lamenting, I think, is a Hebrew biblical word that sometimes can translate almost as whining. But, but it's not the bad version of whining. It's holy whining. It is crying out to God justifiably when you've gone through a tough, tough time. You know, sometimes we act like we don't want to tell God that we're angry. We don't want to tell God that we're hurt. We don't want to disappoint God by letting God think that, that we're not happy with everything that's going on around us. COVID is a little bit of a reason to be sad and to be a little worried and maybe to be a little bit angry. Racism is a reason to, to, to hate something, not somebody, but something, that sin of racism. Those, those are reasons to kind of cry out to God with lament. When, O oh Lord, will this change? When will you rescue us, Lord? When will you stop all of this? And in Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 in the English Standard Version. I'm, I'm using this version because it fits a song I used to sing. And I love this song. It says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. In the song it says, new every morning again. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness Oh, Lord. Have you been saying that lately? In the midst of this time, have you been saying, great is your faithfulness? I, I bet some of you haven't been. As you've looked toward the future, have you said, we, we thank you, Lord. Your blessings are new every day. Great is your faithfulness. I got into a little bit of a nice debate uh, in, in my men's Bible study the other day. Actually, it was a free-for-all of them kind of, uh, kind of, kind of, kind of yelling uh, at, well, not yelling, but they were kind of cajoling me uh, a little bit uh, about my lack of enthusiasm uh, about getting through this COVID and about my being naive. I honestly believed back in March that we would be here in this building for Easter. We had plans. Then we were going to shift it and do something outside. We had plans. And then I thought, oh, what the heck? We'll be back by the time school starts, right? I, I just knew that. And the guys finally told me last night, Bert, we don't know when we're going to be back. Quit telling us you think you know. But don't let that define us. We are back, aren't we? We are here together today via online. We're back every day at noon when I pray. We are back with our small groups Zooming right away. We were back the other night with our church council meeting on WebEx. We are back when we call others, when we pray for others, when we send cards to others. We are back when we give away food. We'll be back when we're out there watching a movie. No matter what we go through, no matter how tough life may seem, the steadfast love of God will never cease. God's mercies will never come to an end. They will continue to be new every morning. And we can sing with confidence that great is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we humans are pretty good at not seeing the greatness that you have around us. And Lord, right now, it's a time when it's been particularly hard on a lot of our members, a lot of our friends, and a lot of our family. But Lord, we know you are still with us. We know that you haven't let us go. We know that you have not given up on us. And so, Lord, we pray this day that as we come to you through Jesus, you would restore our faith. You would help us to know that you are here. 
Lord, I pray for those whom this may seem foreign to. And I pray, Lord, that they would know that Jesus is the answer. And I pray that they would just open their hearts and say, Jesus, come in. Jesus, I believe you are the one and only Son of God. Save me and be with me. And Lord, I pray for those people and I pray for every one of us that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. That we would know that you are here, that you are working in and through us, that you've got this no matter what the this is. Be with us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, would you get up a little bit, move around, and join us in singing. And again, I want to remind you, if you go to Greater Than Prayer event on Sign Up Genius and, and join some of us tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at one of the local elementary schools. As you go out from your home this week, as you go out into the world, may others see that, that you have a confidence in God, that you understand that God is with us. And would you share with them that God can be with them as well. In Jesus' name, amen.